Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to session 13 of Principles of Management course. Student, we shall be discussing today the decision making concept, its fundamentals and process in detail. Now what is the process of decision making or the concept of decision making? In lifetime, we have lot many choices to choose from and at the end, we choose a choice which sufficiently fulfills what we wish to or have a, as a desired outcome from that choice. From the managerial perspective, for example, if a manager thinks of adding new customer to its existing customer base, then he thinks of having marketing strategies and investment in marketing strategic options. Now, while he chooses to go for marketing investments, he may have different course of actions for that and for every course of action there will be some cost involved there will be some benefits of that action and there will be some risk as well he has to then choose out of those available course of actions that which one is the best suitable in terms of all parameters like cost benefit and risks so this is the general understanding of concept of decision making. Let us try to understand this concept in detail further. So managerial decision making is the process by which managers respond to the opportunities and threats by analyzing the options and making decisions about goals and course of actions. Here the decision making is key to effective management in organization because highly accurate decisions will lead to high returns to or what we call as above average returns to the organization and these will be correlated with how well are you able to identify right opportunities and threats in the organizational environment or outside the organizational environment. Another key characteristic of decision making is that it is amongst the four primary management functions that each function has to go for effective decision making. Like we need to have effective decision making while we go for planning or we are thinking of organizing, maybe staffing and then finally for controlling. For all these managerial functions we need to go for right kind of decision making and nearly everything a manager does requires decision making. There is also a term in decision making that is judgment. So what a manager does is a judgment of things that is he does lot of brainstorming or thinking to reach to a conclusion which one is the most appropriate outcome or course of action. When we talk about decisions in response to opportunities which are available in the outside environment, management responds the ways to improve organizational performance. So here he can have some gain out of exploiting the opportunity which is available in the market. While decisions which the manager takes in response to the threats available in the outside environment, here the manager is impacted by adverse events to the organization, thus he would like to safeguard the organization for any damage this threat is going to cause to the organizational setup. Some theoretical aspects of fundamental decision making, now here the, some definitions of decision making like one by James Stoner says decision making is the process of identifying and selecting a course of action to solve a specific problem. While Thomas and Dewing says a conscious choice amongst alternatives followed by the action to implement the choice in decision making. 
this was jointly given by Thomas Duning and John Ivanswich. Then Robert Krittner mentions decision making as a process of identifying choosing among different alternative course of actions in a manner appropriate to demands of the situation. So, here the focus is on how the situation is prompting a manager to take up a decision. One thing we all need to understand that decision making is not an easy task and I hope and I am sure that since beginning since your childhood you must have realized it that whenever you needed to take any decision which is most critical with respect to probably your career, your profession or maybe sometimes in personal life as well since you are quite young that is why I am not mentioning personal life at this moment but still with respect to your studies, course of action that you need to take decision making has always bothered each one of us. So, it must be done amid ever changing factors in the organizational environment outside or inside the in environmental uh, scenarios. What bothers in decision making is first the unclear information. So, if we have unclear information or maybe if we have something called as incomplete information with us, this leads to wrong decision making or inappropriate decision option and often conflicting point of views also deter the decision making process. So, thus we say it is a tedious activity, it is not an easy activity to carry out. Let us understand various characteristics of managerial decision making. So, the first characteristic is that it is future oriented. Now, what do we mean by future oriented? All managerial cons decisions consider and decide only the future course of action. So, this is related to future orientation. Apparently, these decisions are oriented towards future period of time, but however, the past information and the present information also plays essential inputs for taking this future decision. Further the choice based, the second characteristic of managerial decision is that it is choice based phenomenon. So, the importance of prerequisite of decision making is availability of more than one choice for resolving the organizational problems. So, here understandably decision making is meaningless when the problem has only one possible solution. And is devoid of any alternative or solution or choices with us. So, essentially decision making need to be an choice based activity. The third is inbuilt uncertainty and risk. So, since decisions are future oriented activities and primarily they are based on what? They are based on estimated forecasts or the forecasts that the organizational managers does. So, the outcome of decision can neither be known in advance nor accurately measured before its execution or maybe finally when it comes out as a outcome. So, understandably all decisions are characterized by certain degree of uncertainty and risk. This is important to know here. Next characteristic is that decision making leads to goal fulfillment. So, similar to any other managerial activity decision making also primarily aims at accomplishing the objectives, plans and goals of the organization. But these organizational goals and objectives they generally become a guideline or guiding parameters or factors for managerial decision. Next is the intangibility of decision making. So, similar to other managerial functions decisions are also intangible in nature. Students we have discussed this characteristic in the very first session of principles of management. What is an intangible concept which can not be seen, it can only be observed. So, but decisions are real activities that run through the entire organization. So, these decisions are capable of influencing the activities of organization and its members. So, thus it is an intangible activity, it can give the influence, it cannot be seen. 
it is an analytical approach when do we say any approach analytical when it has some rationale behind it and analysis can be done so managerial decisions they require analytical approach to the problem solving process analytical approach actually means a very creative analytical and practical approach to problem solving where we have logic behind any scenario so in the in this the creative aspect is important in deciding what problem is to be solved and the analytic aspect for solving problem is the practical aspect of making it effective decisions further the analytical approach also helps the manager in objectively so what we call as logically is objectively assessing the problem and also taking some logical sound decisions so these were the characteristics of decision making concept now we shall discuss about the approaches to decision making so historically two alternative approaches to decision making are available what are these one is classical approach and the second is behavioral approach so the classical decision approach or theory views the manager as acting under the perfect decision environment where when do we call a perfect decision environment where high amount of certainty exists this is because they operate in the world of certain environment so complete certainty in contrast in behavioral approach they assume that the decision makers act only in terms of what they perceive about the environment why so because they operate in high amount of uncertainty and may not have complete information about the environment then along with these two approaches there is another approach the third approach which is called as a garbage can approach this is also available for decision making as per this approach the components of decision making what all are the components of decision making students for example what is the problem who are all the participants what is the situation and solutions all the factors which relate to decision making are mixed up as a garbage and that is why it is called as a garbage can approach now here decision makers they should ensure that specific problems are matched to specific and appropriate solutions in an orderly manner in order to avoid the garbage can approach also in this regard it is assumed that problems arise just after the solutions are emerged so for example here when an organization develops high quality product it has to find ways to market them now how what is the solution to market the high quality products solution is quality competency and problem is gainfully market such quality competency when a manager is deciding on certain decisions or problems resolving certain problems there are environments in which he works what are different types of environments first is decision under certain environment decision under risk environment and decision under uncertainty of the environment here this decision under uncertainty has few models which describe how in uncertain environment decisions are taken or what are the different characteristics of uncertain environment let's discuss these three decision making environments decision environment under certainty when the information available for decision making is adequate and perfect for accurate prediction then the environment can be described as it is in certainty in such the in such environments manager can identify and evaluate each alternative properly and give solution to these 
and predict perfect outcome. For example, when the purchase manager has all details about different vendors, their products, price, performance, features and other necessary information, then what, what he can do? He can make a decision that is choosing a vendor for supplying the raw material and because he is fully aware about the outcomes of his decisions. But managers rarely face a decision environment with certainty. In real life situations as future is always uncertain and unpredictable, it is difficult to have this certain environment. Next approach is decision environment under risk category. This is an intermediate situation where outcome of an alternative cannot be predicted with certainty, but the probability of specified outcome can be measured. So, we can say to a certain extent, we have know how of what is going to be the outcome of this decision. So, how managers decide in this risk scenario that is based on their knowledge, their experience and their judgmental skills. Together with the adequate information, whatever they have got, managers can predict the desired outcome. Using this method, managers measure generally through quantitatively and they, there is a chances that they will have the outcomes accordingly, they can change their decisions. So, for example, when HR manager knows out the past experience and records that a specific number of employees would leave the organization in normal year, what we call as employee turnover. He has data for that, he or she can then determine what are going to be the probable vacancies for tomorrow for requirement of work force. Now the third and most critical part of decision under the environment when it is highly uncertain. So, in an uncertain environment, manager can predict neither the outcome nor the probability of outcome of their decisions. So, when manager faces some kind of restricted access to internal information or he has to deal with some uncontrollable external factors then the decision environment becomes uncertain. In such uncertain environment, managers may have to make decisions without knowing all possible out outcomes or maybe any likely outcomes. So, when a, a case example can be a marketing manager if decides on a discount offer for a product. So, for this discount offer, the response that the competitor or customer how they are going to behave may not be known to him. So, that unknown part is the uncertain environment and this may make the decision environment based on uncertainty and outcomes based on unpredictability. So, usually there will be uncertainty regarding one or more elements of the problems in decision making in an environment of uncertainty. So, the decision maker generally uses mathematical models or theories to specify and deal with those uncertain elements. These models are usually classified into either they are probabilistic models or non-probabilistic models based on how uncertainty has to be treated. Let us now discuss these probability and unprobability models will he which help the manager to come to a conclusion during the uncertain environments. So, in the case of probabilistic model, the decision maker is normally able to specify the probability of each of uncertain events which are associated with the decision making process. So, here they know the uncertain events and the probabilistic model is often used for decision making under risk. While opposite to that, in case of non-probabilistic model, decision maker is not able and is unwilling to specify the probability of uncertain event 
or not the non probabilistic model deals with decision making under uncertainty. So, here you can see probabilistic model is for risk and non probability model is for uncertain environment. Now, however, some experts argue that both of these models probabilistic and non probabilistic they have applications for decision environment under both risk and uncertainty. So, here both are but this is another point of view by many researchers. So, we shall now see the important models or theories that have relevance for decision making which help the manager to take decisions to a great extent accurately. So, first is the decision theory. It is basically study of decision making under uncertainty using mathematical models. So, this is the basic definition of decision theory. It is mainly a one person game or a game of a single player against the nature and this theory makes available logical framework for managers for developing a system or a rule. So, logic and rule work together in decision theory that may lead to the selection of a best course of action under the prevailing environment. This decision theory can be of two types, it can be normative decision theory or it can be descriptive decision theory. Now, what is the difference between the two? A normative decision theory is the theory on how the decisions should normally be made. So, this is based on a general approach, how decisions are normally made while the descriptive theory is how decisions are made. in reality. This is the difference between normative and descriptive approach to decision theory. Number two theory which helps and assist the manager in taking decision is game theory. It is very interesting theory students. This theory says that the gain of one person is loss of the other. Here for example, if you and your friend are applying for the same position in an organization, then you realize that your friend has better educational qualification and experience background. So, as a result what happens? You feel that if both of us apply then he has brighter chances of getting selection in the for that particular position. Now, the game theory says that since you anticipate that he has brighter chances to be selected, tomorrow if he does not apply and you get through that position. So, this is gain of loss of one is gain of the other. This is what game theory is all about. So, as per this theory one person's success in making choice depends on choice of the other person. Like your friend if he does not choose to go ahead with that position then your choice is implemented. Now, here the decision maker employ games of strategy similarly as we play the game of chess that strategy is applied, but not the chance as in the case of coin. In coin we take a chance and that is not applied in game theory. In chess we apply the strategy that is what is taken into game theory. In game of strategy two or more person with competing choice of action they participate as I explained in the example and each person may gain or lose from his or her choice of action depending upon what others choose to do or not to do. So, others choice may become gain for the second person. The ultimate outcome of game will be decided by strategies adopted by the participants. So, how well are we having a tactics application so that we win this game. Game theory is indeed a zero sum game in sense that one person's gain is another person's loss or vice versa. So, these two theories that we have just now discussed game theory and the decision theory based on the differ on the basis of how they formalize interdependence amongst the player. Game theory is further divided into two categories and which is 
cooperative theory and non cooperative theory the term itself suggests that in game theory there can be chances that two people who are highly competing and are going for choice of alternatives amongst each other they may cooperate or they may have a non cooperative approach in case of cooperative game theory players can coordinate their strategies by pooling their individual strategies through binding agreements and redistribute the joint strategy in a specific way so they finally share the benefits available out for such joint strategy so it's a win win situation for both the players because they have a coordination amongst each other while in contrast to cooperative theory the non cooperative game is detailed model of all moves available to the players now in this players mostly they make independent and self enforcing decisions no collaboration with others this theory deals largely with how intelligent the individual interact with one another in an effort to achieve their own goals so this is how game theory also enables an individual to take decisions next theory is dynamic stochastic general equilibrium theory now this theory is basically a specialized branch of game theory only it is well designed framework that provides quantitative answers to the questions of interest to decision making or you can say the problems answers to the problems come under quantitative answers and this theory aims at describing the behavior of an economy as a whole by analyzing the interaction of many micro economic decisions so it takes up the broader factors it helps decision makers in understanding and explaining aggregate economic phenomenon like economic growth business cycles or effects of monetary or fiscal policies on different industrial setups the fourth theory that guides for decision making is mechanism design theory this theory provides a general framework to study any collective decision problems such as allocation of work in a team that is a collective decision problem the allocation of funds in an organization again it is a collective decision problem so answering to collective decision problems we can seek help from mechanism design theory for instance game theory takes the rules of game as given while the mechanism theory asks about the consequences of different types of rules so mechanism design theory is different than the game theory it is focusing more on how the outcomes are going to be when rules are different the design of compensation this is an example for mechanism design theory the design of compensation and wage agreements that effectively spread risk even while maintaining incentives is an example of decision based on mechanism design theory because here the mechanism to design compensation and wage agreement may still have some risk even if they are giving the appropriate incentive so since the decisions cannot be made in vacuum managers must carefully analyze the decision environment and they must look to facilitate factors as well as limiting factors for their decisions in the environment both the limitations and felicitations should be appropriately acknowledged and within the constraints given to the decision maker they should choose the best possible op option utilizing the information available within the environment Now let's move on studying the six steps in managerial decision making process. It starts with first recognizing the requirement for decision. So the manager here has to identify is there any need for decision? Is there any problem that is bothering the organization or is there any change in external environment which is pushing the organization to go ahead with some or other decision diagnosing and analyzing the causes why this decision is required 
So, why are we going ahead with the changes or need are we not ready in the spirit at this moment only to take up whatever the changes are coming or the problems are coming or do we have to go ahead with some essentially additional decisions to the organizational setup. Then the third step is development of various alternatives what we also called as call as course of actions that a manager can identify while diagnosing the causes that what all can be different alternatives that he can choose to move ahead. Once that is done selection of desired alternative has to be done. Now, this is the most critical time or critical step where the manager has to utilize different theories. He has to identify whether I am selecting in a certain environment, whether I am selecting in an uncertain environment, whether the environment is risky or whether I have some other scenario which I need to address too. And selection of desired alternative also depends on the capability of the manager, his knowledge base and experiences too. Once the course of action has been selected, then implementation of that course of action or selected action is the next step because even if you choose some step and you do not implement it, then probably whole exercise may go futile. So, thus the implementation in right manner or appropriate spirit is required for the chosen alternative. After implementing unless until we go for evaluation and feedback, the process is not complete because this is the time where we can identify any kind of deviations that can be from what we had actually desired of by choosing this alternative and what actual are the outcomes and is there any gap between the two. This gap will help us to make some amendments and probably may go to the first step to recognize whether the decision requirement was appropriate or in the process of whole of this uh, decision making was there any step that went wrong because of which this gap has occurred. So, we need to identify that and try to fill in that gap and rectify the same. Now, managers need to adopt certain strategies also for decision making apart from various tools, techniques, theories, definitely some strategies which enable the manager to reach to the desired outcome or accurate outcome. So, first strategy is optimizing. This strategy expects manager to choose the best possible alternative to solve any organizational problem. They must develop as many alternatives as possible and choose the very best without any compromise. So, that is important that optimize that means which gives or incurs lower cost and higher benefit. And minimum wastage that would be the most optimum decision that the manager can take. Second strategy that the manager can opt for is satisficing. Now, what is satisficing students? Satisficing is a decision that the manager takes up when he behaves or he feels that I have looked into the alternatives in a great sense. Lot many alternatives and course of actions have been identified, they have been explored, they have been analyzed, but I have some limitations to my thought process, I cannot think beyond it. So, what I choose is probably the first alternative that completes all the minimum requirement, they become good enough for me. So, this term good enough is nothing but satisficing. So, these, this term is combination of two terms satisfactory and sufficient and as per this strategy manager must decide on a solution that satisfies the minimum requirements to achieve a goal without waiting for best solution to emerge. Example managers may adopt this strategy when they have to purchase low cost stationary items for their office. So, they do not go for multiple options here. Rather, they go for the first low cost stationery that they encounter and they believe it is better to save time rather than spending time on identifying other low cost options and when this is satisfying our requirement, we must go ahead with it. 
then the third approach is maximax this strategy of maximax means that maximize the minimums in this strategy the managers evaluate the alternatives with the intention of choosing the best of best options and remain optimistic about favorable outcomes now however managers adopting this strategy usually prepare themselves for both high risk as well as high returns while the fourth strategy is maximin which is opposite to maximize the minimums it is maximize the sorry which is opposite to maximize the maximums it is opposite to the maximize the minimums here this approach involves making the best out of worst possible conditions and in this strategy managers identify the worst possible outcomes for their decisions and choose the best amongst these options to minimize the loss so here the focus is on that we must have minimum possible loss and in maximax the focus is on we can have or we should have highest possible returns they remain pessimistic about the outcomes of their decisions and managers play it safe by opting for a minimum but definitely positive outcome so here they are just trying to be more safe in their approach while in maximas the manager is taking high risk so high risk may lead to high return while maxi minimum will lead to maybe lesser outcome or some losses but it will be safe it will not take the organization to negative downturn here they adopt this strategy when the risks are high and the consequences of failure are enormous in such situation they go for maxi minimum for example organization may choose to launch a product that gives them a minimum guaranteed profit as against another product that may earn better profit but has higher chances of failure so this is maximax and minimax strategies so adopting any of the above mentioned strategies manager may decide the suitable course of action to solve the organizational problems but however students the type of decision would differ depending on the nature and intensity of the problem so let us now first see the types of problems followed by the decision types so based on what type of problem is later on we'll decide on what type of decision is to be taken now when we talk about types of organizational problems students there can be broadly categorized into two two types of problems one is the structured problem and second one is the semi structured problem in structured problems they are generally the routine problems the cause for such problem is known and solutions are also known to us so thus we call them as structured problem and we are certain about that if we take x y z action to it that is course of actions are known in the structured problems while in semi structured problems or ill structured problems there can be novel or unique problems which may have occurred for the first time and solutions are unknown to us so how to strategize in order to solve these structured and semi structured problems let us first try to understand these structured and semi structured issues so these problems are usually the structured problems are usually the easier to solve reoccurring and straightforward problems in nature the information and procedure required for solving such problems are usually available to the manager so what is important to take a decision always in life is information and here information is known to the manager so for example non payment by a credit customer is a structured problem it's a routine problem generally customers do not pay their dues back on time so for managers and as they would be well aware of the customer details because they have also got the kyc of the customer and also the procedure to adopt for collection of such outstanding debt is very well defined so in that case it is a structured problem while semi structured problems are these problems partly structured and partly unstructured in nature in other words managers would certainly have some information and procedure for solving these problems but they are not adequately equipped with all information 
This can happen due to the non-availability of precise, adequate and timely information. So, to some extent managers would be forced to depend on subjective judgment for solving semi-structured problem. Now, here this is something very important to understand and what is the importance here? that we are relying on the judgment. In the very first beginning of this session, I told you that judgment and thinking is what the manager works on. So, this is also called as heuristics, the instinct, the judgment that the manager takes into consideration while solving a problem or making a decision. Example here is that the managers may have complete information about the internal factors affecting their pricing decisions, but not enough information about the external factors that will affect their pricing decisions. So, here they have partly they have some information and partly they have unclear information about outside. So, for the unclear information, the manager has to go with his judgment. The third category of problem is unstructured problems. So, these problems are which are unusual, new or what we call as novel also, they are unique in nature for the first time they have occurred, they are ambiguous, difficult to be defined with clarity. Now, here managers cannot have any ready made solution for these problems and they may find it very difficult and time consuming to collect all facts about the problem. They may also be required to develop all some kind of new procedures for tackling such problems and these problems often call for time and resources as well of higher level of management that is attention by the higher level of management is also required to solve these unstructured problems and any solution to such problem is normally developed on the basis of the expertise experience, skill and finally, intuition of the manager that is the judgment. For example, a successful implementation of a merger proposal by a company may create unstructured problems to the management because this is for the first time the company may be going for merger program with the other organization. Now, in order to solve these students, in order to solve these uh, structured, semi-structured and unstructured problems, we have decision types with us and what are these decision types? Generally, they are broadly into categorized as program decisions and non-program decisions. So, as in the case of nature of the problem, structured, unstructured or semi-structured, the decision type is also of the similar nature that is program decisions which are already in line, all the steps and course of actions are decided for them, they are repetitive and reoccurring in nature and easy to administer as well. While non-program decisions are again for the unique problems, we have to go for something which is novel decision or novel non-programmed outcome. So, let us see what are these uh, programmed decision type and non-programmed decision type. So, having discussed the kinds of uh, nature of organizational problems, manager may have programmed decision to solve the routine and repetitive issues. So, these decisions usually taken into conformity well with the established policies, procedures, rules in the organization. So, they become the guidelines to solve the programmed problems or structured problems. The routine decisions may also be made on the basis of past experiences and technical knowledge of the manager. So, not a big hassle in practice every organization keeps certain standard procedures for tackling routine problems which we also called as standard operating procedures or SOPs in the organizations. So, these decisions can save managers time which he spends in decision making that is complex decision making. So, time and resources are also saved here. Now, once the problem are clearly defined and decision making process is well established as in the case of programmed decision, the lower level manager can be permitted to handle these problems and that is a best part of the program decisions that even lower managers or middle managers can handle it. We need not go to the top management for every kind of solution. 
and this arrangement will enable the top manager to focus more on non reoccurring intense and complicated unstructured problems and identify decisions for the same for example here the procedure and time limit set by textile shops for permitting their customer to exchange their recently bought clothes with a new piece is an example of programmed decisions for solving customer complaints and i am sure students you all must have done this sometime in your life where you have utilized this facility and that was part of nothing but programmed decision on the part of the shopkeeper then we move on to the second that is non programmed decisions where managers formulate these non programmed decisions which are for tackling something exceptional complex and unusual problems so the need for non programmed decision may arise when adequate information or predetermined procedures is not readily available with the manager to solve the problems so for example non programmed decisions are usually made by managers to capitalize on the new opportunities or deal with new threats which are there in the environment since these threats and opportunities the manager may be dealing for the first time so they are ill structured problems or unstructured problems and thus need non programmed decisions to be administered for example here the decision by bank management to install an atm facility at a specific location can be a non programmed decision because the outcome is yet unknown since these decisions require systematic analysis of problem logical decision making so this is what the manager has to do systematic analysis of the problem logical decision making ability significant amount of time these decisions are usually made at higher level of the management that is top management focuses on these decisions mergers and acquisition can be one of the examples of non programmed decisions product and service pricing make or buy decision utilization of scarce resources acceptance or rejection of non routine orders employee wage agreements legal issues are few examples for non programmed decisions let us see students now how we reach to solution of a problem in certain conditions so conditions that affect the possibility of decision failure we believe in that there is an organization problem organization problem may have certain solutions that is factual with respect to information there can be the certain information available to it there can be ambiguity with respect to the information available there can be risk also with respect to the decisions to be made and uncertainty as well so this is the quantum quantum is the running line which has degree to it from high to low as you can see it's written here as well now how we have to identify we have to identify the possibility of failure possibility of failure is lowest when the certainty is higher with the member or certainty exists with the manager and possibility of failure is highest when the situation is ambiguous in between there is a moderate possibility of failure when there is probably certainty is there information is there but some risk is also involved and in this case uncertainty is there but not complete ambiguity so that means some information is definitely available if not complete information now the manager through this diagram is guided that can that he can take up programmed decisions or non programmed decisions based on where the scenario is placed so we can see here for loss for certain situations where the possibility of failure is low the manager can go for programmed decisions for uncertain and ambiguous situations manager has to go for non programmed decision for risk scenario if the information is available then he can go for programmed decisions if information is not available then he may seek help from the non programmed decisions having said this an understanding of decision making process now i believe students it is the time to find out how a manager faces challenges when he decides on 
we do not realize the intensity of challenges or issues problems that the manager faces once he is going for decision making under which one of the first thing or first challenges that manager faces is called as bounded rationality now what is the concept of bounded rationality we all have logical reasoning power right and this logical reasoning power enable us to come to certain solutions and choices of decisions in our life what happens that if this rationality gets a ceiling or a limit to it that limit to our rationality is called as bounded rationality and when we reach to that limit of giving reasoning or logics to any solution we say that it is enough and now we don't want to think any more and we are going ahead with, with the alternative we can see at this moment so manager also faces this psychological issues that is bounded rationality when he goes for decision making problem and this becomes a challenge for the manager let us understand this decision making challenge that is bounded rationality it was given by herbert simon it was given by herbert simon and he he advocated a realistic but slightly pe pessimistic theory known as the theory of bounded rationality this theory suggests that decision maker in maker in practice have only limited time resources and intelligence so that's the important aspect intelligence is limited as such the information gathered by them remains inadequate and incomplete also why inadequate and incomplete had that been the case that information was adequate and was complete then probably there was no requirement to use their intelligence much or maybe resources because they know that what is the information with me and now i have to take the decision but since these prerequisites occur that is inadequate and incomplete information then they have to utilize their intelligence and resources to a larger extent and due to these limiting factors he is not able to give the appropriate alternative so consequently they tend to limit their search for alternatives as well and also avoid avoid a thorough evaluation of them so these practical difficulties often make them compromise their search for best solution they have given up in searching they believe in that okay we do not want to go ahead with any further solution to it and they settle on the first satisfactory decision known as satisfying so they become trapped with satisfying and they go ahead with this solution only next the manager goes with fear of failure what is fear of failure here the manager who has a pessimistic mindset and is not confident about the outcome of decision they resist decision making they may have developed the fear of failure from their own past experiences that because in the last times he could not perform well probably in the next decision also that they are taking for example with respect to customer services they feel that probably this decision also will not be acceptable by the customer so there is a fear of failure they are anxious and effective manager on the contrary makes quick and informed decisions without any undue anxiety so anxiety is in the manager which leads to have a fear of failure which eventually affects the decision making process and the manager is not able to come up with effective decision then comes misaligned priorities this is also a challenge and decision making typically involves proper alignment of people program and processes and systems but in reality the success of decision making is often impaired by misalignment of the priorities by the manager so in this happens when managers fail to focus on overall perspective of decision making while setting priorities allocating resources and determining the contributory activities so they are not able to combine these things well in proper alignment information overload also becomes a trouble as it leads to fatigue to the manager and can have adverse effect on decision making process and decision quality so too much of information also bothers the manager advancements in information technology and internet have made information overload a real problem for managers and i think students not only for managers for everyone who is into professionalism or maybe someone who's taking care back home also too much of information is bothering that which is the right alternative to be chosen from in life 
decisions or in professional decisions. So, the presence of large amount of information may force busy managers to avoid a serious search for information while developing decision alternatives. Here one instance by Jacobi and others who mentioned that when there is an information overload, the decision quality first increases because you have right so maybe right solutions in front of you, but later significantly decreases because you become ambiguous between which alternative to choose. However, information overload can increase decision quality if the managers are not under any time pressure, then they can give their time and evaluate each alternative effectively. Absence of creativity, absence of any new thought, absence of any novel idea can lead to ineffective decision. The, in the fast paced environment, managers often tend to make stereotypical decisions and they and avoid if possible the risky and unconventional approaches. So, non-flexible organizational policies, non-flexible which the one who do not give platform for creativity. Here, these non-flexible organization policies and practices limit their freedom to try out innovation and out of box thinking. Out of box thinking is very much required for any new venture because otherwise if you have lot many competitors already in the field, your similar stale thought process will not take you to greater returns. So, understandably the lack of imagination and absence of creativity can affect managers ability to take a successful non-routine decision. Then comes group hindrances. In group decision making, everyone's responsibility for consequences of decision actually ends up no one's responsibility. This is highly important. Now, it relates to a concept of social loafing where when a person is working in a group, he tends to restrict himself from himself from giving his best. Why he tends to restrict? Because he believes that I should not showcase my best of ability at this moment. So, similarly, when responsibility is common, generally people believe that the other person will do it and the other person thinks that the first person will do it and it ends up in no one's responsibility. So, in this, the absence of direct and individual responsibility may also embolden the members to make risky and even reckless decisions. Here, group members will hesitate to challenge bad ideas just to avoid conflict and preserve unity. They want that the coordination they have should always remain with them. Psychological bias is another factor that disturbs the decision making process. It may mean an unfair assessment of alternatives by managers as a result of their systematic favoritism. So, this is unfair and unjust practice. Managerial decisions are generally influenced by a number of unconscious common biases that individuals make. These biases eventually affect the objectivity and rationality of decision making process. So, let us understand different types of psychological biases that the manager faces while he is taking decisions in the organizational setup. The very first is the framing bias. Framing bias means that how the the issue or challenge has been framed in front of the manager. In this case, whether the uh, problem was presented or projected in a positive manner or a negative manner, the manager tends to make opinion based on that. For example, manager can be more influenced by positive projection of the same problem as by negative projection of the same. So, how the problem has been framed in front of the manager is the framing bias. So, while describing the viability of a project, a positive description of 40 percent chance of success which is a positive framing may appear to be more appealing than this to the decision maker than a negative description of 60 percent chance of failure. So, it will deter the decision maker to move ahead with this possibility or this decision. Next is availability bias. This bias may distort managers opinion on various alternatives and affect the objectivity of the decision making exercise. For instance, the performance evaluation managers may tend to heavily weigh the recent performances of employee in their decision. So, this error occurs or this bias occurs when the manager heavily relies on or overemphasis is given on recent information 
and underestimates the relevance of events of distant past. Then comes discount the feature bias. This bias refers to the manager's tendency to attach to undue importance to short term cost and benefit that the decision is going to give. And the bias may result in negligence of long term perspectives of the discussion. So, here the immediate discount or benefit that the manager is getting, he is more inclined towards it. For instance, manager's decision to postpone the overhauling of machinery may avoid any immediate work schedule. So, that is the saving that he is doing. But however, it may cause machinery breakdown and substantial production lot loss at the later stages. So, this is what the manager is overlooking at this stage. Overconfidence bias, this bias arises when managers overestimate their productive and decision making ability, which probably can be a natural aptitude of the manager to do so. So, the bias is a more seen at times when managers work in unfamiliar environment and they have no previous knowledge. In these scenarios, managers generally go for overconfidence bias and this bias may lead to managers making riskier decisions when outcome is hardly predicted. Then comes anchoring bias. This bias occurs when the manager gets carried away by, by their first impression. in decision making. So, as a result, they may be tempted to overlook or underestimate the subsequent developments. For instance, the managers may be unduly influenced by initial response of the candidates to their questions at employment selection interview and later yet they do not realize that how far the substance is there in the candidate or is suitable for that position. Decision escalation biases, a poor initial decision or misjudgment usually makes manager nervous about the decision failure and in certain in such situations the manager they attempt to over allocate the resources because of the fear and because of over allocation of resources to save the decision even if it is very high failure prospects. So, they believe that if we do this exercise of over allocation, there is a possibility that we may have gain in the end. So, this may happen when causes of decision failure are serious and managers are unprepared for it. Then comes hindsight bias. So, the essence of this bias is the thought that I knew that was going to happen. On this bias, managers usually overstate their ability to predict the outcome of an event and decision after, even after the actual outcome is known to them. So, they have a tendency to view the future occurrences as more predictable than they really are. So, fact and predictable occurrences. Self-serving bias, this bias arises due to the human desire to be always successful. So, people have the tendency to identify themselves with success while blaming others for failure. And similarly, managers also have the tendency to take the credit for doing what well and evade responsibility for doing the failure. Though it is not at all advisable in the organizational setting up settings, but the manager definitely have self-serving biases. Representation bias on the other hand is when managers evaluate the alternatives, they may be inclined to recall the past event or experience and they feel that it is representing itself. The past event is representing itself. So, it appears similar to the past problem solution and in this bias, the present decision of managers would be guided more by their past experiences than by what is the reality today. Hence, there can be a bias or there can be some undue or incorrect decision that the manager may take out of this representation error. So, students this is the bibliography that I have referred for this session. You may study in detail from these books to have in depth knowledge on the content. This is all from my side on decision making fundamentals, process, different types of decisions and types of problems that we may face. This is all for today's session. Thank you.